Hello, welcome to this uh, tutorial part dedicated to the installation of the Bradley. Uh, first, you need to buy some device and to install uh, some uh, driver and associated software to compile and uh, flash some Bradley on your uh, specific uh, hardcore uh, of the cheap uh, toys frame controller. But I uh, will start by a uh, big warning, uh, big cautions. Uh, this is a one-way procedure uh, because we don't have the original uh, firmware of this um, uh, small uh, frame controller board. So it means that if you flash Bradley, you can't uh, return back um, because we don't have uh, the original firmware. So be aware of this and uh, uh, please don't ask me how to return back, it's not possible. So you need to sacrifice a very cheap um, board, something like 10 dollars, 12 dollars, okay? So the first items you need to buy is this ST-Link V2, a uh, very tiny LED key with 5 uh, different wire. It's got something like uh, um, 4, uh, 3.5 dollars, very cheap. And associated with, you need to uh, download an STME credit Phoenix web page. The associated uh, driver, okay, actually this is the version 1.0.4 uh, for Windows platform. So uh, actually, uh, the software is this one, okay, so this is the one. So you have an exe file which can install. Uh, the second uh, device to buy. Uh, in order to monitor in real time uh, the information, for example, given by uh, provided by the right telemetry and gyroscope, is um, a simple uh, FDI USB to shore converter. So, in this side, you will be the USB uh, a plug connected to your computer, and on this side, you will find uh, at minimum the four wires uh, to make the serial connection. So it's uh, pretty easy. This model is very cheap and it's very important to have a version allowing the 5 volt and 3.3 volt uh, output. Okay, because uh, in main of uh, majority of time the uh, R core is uh, need to be uh, powered in 3.3 volts. So be aware to not be wrong and to have some someone uh, some sorry some converter in five volt working five volt so it's very important to work in three dot three volt okay so the associated software can be found in NVDI website and you have for example for Windows platform you have this version and uh, the two dot twelve version and uh, when you save it uh, it's um, uh, where they are they are uh, well to download them. Okay, and you save. Okay, here. Okay, in fact, they are already there. And um, it's a small piece of software. They are here. Okay, to megabyte, quite light. Well, but the most uh, software to install are uh, the um, MD key of Kale so uh, software. Kale, it, it is a. Uh, uh, Company uh, working with uh, Amcor and they produce a software and you in order to compile uh, for this uh, processor. So you need to download the MDK ROM. Okay, you have to fill this uh, field, and um, at the end you will have a file called MDK uh, 512, close to 535 megabytes. Okay, and the second software to download uh, are, is this one. The, you have to go to the legacy part and to download the uh, legacy support of Cortex and M device. Okay, so at the end you should have this file downloaded on your uh, local uh, tab. Um, what also you will need as software? You will need um, the last stable version of MultiWi. Uh, 2.3, okay, and uh, also in order to find the uh, 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 multi week off to uh, monitor in real time the data, and uh, finally, uh, you will need uh, the um, uh, ACK uh, Capter uh, project. So, three links there. Um, in this one, you will find uh, by downloading here. 
the all the uh, software to flash your uh, ARM core. Okay, especially you can define in this uh, uh, folder. So you need to download specifically the GD385 documentation master.zip, and in this one you will find uh, this. Sorry, this uh, Kale Flash Tool. Okay, and you will be able you will be able with this one to erase, delete the initial firmware. So um, uh, also you need to download the last build of uh, Bradley. Uh, Gobish uh, have the last up to date version with the last modification and update. So you have to download this zip, which is the Bradley X4 uh, zip dot, uh, dot zip. Okay, and it's downloaded here. Okay, and uh, well, uh, what I have to say that to connect uh, the um, uh, board, let's say uh, the um, 262, I got to close the portal here. Okay, this is the V3 3 board, but it's the same for the V262. Here you will find the three pins here, here are the SWD ports. Okay, the ground, uh, the data, and the clock, respectively, from the left to right. And this one are the serial port. Okay, so here are solder uh, this uh, mini joystick connector. So uh, you need to uh, uh, buy this uh, mini uh, GST connector in order to uh, solder here. Okay, so these connector are. Uh, Minimal X, uh, 125 millimeters, 5 pines, GST connector. Okay, so you have to solder the male one, and with the female one, you will do your own cable to attach to the uh, uh, here, ending with the Dupont wire to uh, connect to your VDI uh, serial converter. And one thing maybe can be useful is this hook, okay, because um, Usually, I hook the the clamp there directly, the ground, the data, and the clock there. So it's avoiding to um, to solder another male uh, Molex connector. So it's pretty easy, and uh, well, in fact, you have all the um, pine out of the uh, of the uh, uh, mini fifty four Zan here. Okay, so. Um, the point is there. It means that the serial port is here, the 3130, takes an RX respectively, which is in this photo, this one and this one respectively. And you will find the ground here and the 3.3 uh, volt here. So this is why it's important to have a, a FDI, de FDI device. Uh, pouring uh, with 3.3 volt. Okay, so ground here. Uh, let's let's check. Do not say stupidities. You have the uh, Rx here. Rx takes and uh, this this is uh, VCC. So um, the uh, SWD port uh, is located here. And the 20 here and the 19. Okay, so with this board, it's pretty nice because you have already this uh, uh, debug port available. But uh, if they are not accessible, if you have a mini LAN, it doesn't mean that you can't install battery, but you need to solder directly on this on tiny pine. So this is a more difficult job to do. Okay, so this is the um, hand of the installation software. So, uh, mine, the procedure, uh, install the, uh, this driver. Uh, well, you, an important thing, you need to plug your uh, device in a USB 2 port. Okay, in USB 3, it, it doesn't work. And when you are plugging it, okay, I will plug it in my USB 2, you will see that. Um, 
you will see that in the uh, um, sorry in the uh, in the uh, uh, um, uh, device manager you should have see something here happening okay so if it's working if it's uh, plugged in uh, USB 2 for example if I'm plugging now in USB 3 you should have something like this okay it's happening like this in USB 3 so be aware to not be uh, get stuck like this so uh, when I'm plugging again in USB 2 it's reappearing in the, uh, the uh, bus controller part Okay, so after you have to install the um, the software, okay, double click. It takes four or five minutes. It's quite long. Uh, I install it in in the program file, for example, right here. They are installed somewhere here. K V five versions, and after you have to install uh, this software. Like why all the uh, original source of um, uh, the uh, API in order to recompile to your specific uh, ARM core, okay? And after you need to um, uh, extract the uh, from this uh, zip file, okay? You have to extract the quad farm flashing and. Uh, this folder and extract here, and you will find the uh, mini uh, K project to flash and uh, your original uh, firmware. Okay, and what you have to do also, sorry, you have to um, um, extract from the um, uh, the MIDI we call. So even if I'm working 62 megabytes, uh, you have to extract this one. Okay, so uh, finally, the last things to do is to extract everything from this one. So this is the source of bad wheat. So install here. Okay, so now uh, all the step is quite easy. There is no specific problem. Okay, so first install this driver. Okay, then this one software, this second package. Okay, then after you have to extract the RS flashing firmware tool from this zip file. Okay, then you will need to uh, extract the um, uh, multiwiconf from uh, multiwiconf3zip. And the, uh, finally, from this one, you will need to extract the Bradway master file. Oh, I forgot to mention. Uh, when you want to monitor the real time, you will need uh, to install this driver from the DDI device. Okay, so it's installed. And uh, well, if I'm connecting it, uh, it will mount the. Um, okay, so I will connect to the board. And you will see that it will install a virtual. I'm returning to this device. You will see appearing uh, here the uh, COM15 associated with the DDI device. Okay, so if I'm unplugging it, it should disappear. Okay, so now it's disappeared. We don't have any more the uh, virtual COM. Okay, so this is the end of the first part about the installation of the, all the uh, associated software required to install and Flash and to install uh, Bradley on your specific uh, iron core or, for example, my uh, V262 board.